According to Reuters, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag said Marcus Rashford's absence for their FA Cup fourth round fixture against Newport County was an internal matter, after the Premier League club said the forward was not well enough to be in the squad. United said in a statement before their 4-2 win that the 26-year-old England international had stayed at Carrington to train as he recovers. According to Reuters, China has approved more than 40 artificial intelligence models for public use in the first six months since authorities began the Govan AI development, according to Chinese media. Chinese regulators granted approvals to a total of 14 large language models for public use last week, Chinese state-backed Securities Times reported. It marks the fourth batch of approvals China has granted, which counts Xiaomi Corp, 4 Paradigm and O1. I among the recipients. According to Bloomberg, Wuxi Biologics Cayman Inc. shares slumped for the second day as investors worried over a ramp-up in geopolitical tensions following a U.S. draft bill targeting Chinese biotech companies. Wuxi Biologics fell more than 6% in Hong Kong Monday, erasing earlier gains triggered by the firm's denial of its chief executive officer Jisheng Chen's ties with military-associated institutions. Wuxi Aptech also tumbled by a similar magnitude following a 16% drop on Friday. According to Reuters, Iran's mission to the United Nations said in a statement on Monday that Tehran was not involved in an attack that killed three U.S. service members in northeastern Jordan near the Syrian border. In a statement published by the state news agency Erna, the mission Said, Iran had no connection and had nothing to do with the attack on the U.S. base. According to Bloomberg, stocks in Asia advanced after China's latest measures to bolster its equity market in the property sector injected a note of optimism. Energy shares were boosted by higher oil prices. Property shares climbed in Hong Kong after the southern city of Guangzhou eased home buying restrictions. China's securities regulator said on the weekend it will halt the lending of certain shares for short selling from Monday. The latest steps add to measures aiming to arrest a slide in the nation's stocks which has seen the MSCI China index tumble about 60% from a February 2021 peak. According to Bloomberg, China Evergrande Group was ordered to be liquidated by a Hong Kong court, a stunning legal coda for the world's most indebted property developer. A wind-up could end up in management being replaced in addressing some issues, Judge Linda Chan said in the city's high court on Monday morning. According to Reuters, Indian government bond yields were flattish at the start of the week, as traders awaited the U.S. Federal Reserve policy decision and the domestic budget announcement for directional cues. India's benchmark 10-year yield was at 7.1757% as of 10.05 a.m. IST, on Monday, following its previous close at 7.1760%. According to Bloomberg, a missile attack on Friday on a tanker taking Russian fuel through the Gulf of Aden may prove to be a defining moment for an oil market that had previously been somewhat immune to months of Houthi militants' attacks on merchant trade. Why the calm? Because much of the oil flowing through the Red Sea and Suez Canal came from Russia and, so the theory went, it might be safe. The Houthis themselves signaled Russian ships had nothing to fear, and Moscow is an ally of their sponsor Iran. Oil tankers generally had been largely spared. According to Bloomberg, President Joe Biden faces intensifying pressure to confront Iran directly after the country's proxies killed three American soldiers in a drone strike in Jordan, risking precisely the wider regional conflict that he's said he wants to avoid. A person familiar with the U.S. position, who asked not to be identified discussing private discussions, said it was clear that a strike killing Americans would force a stronger response than what the U.S. has done so far in the weeks since Hamas militants attacked Israel on October 7 and touched off a new conflagration in the Middle East. According to Bloomberg, the Adani Group's flagship company can deliver a gain of more than 50 percent, Cantor Fitzgerald Company said, adding that the firm is central to India's economic ambitions. Adani Enterprises Limited is at the core of everything India wants to accomplish. Analysts Brett Knobloch and Thomas Shinsky wrote in a note dated January 28, initiating coverage as overweight. The risk-reward is attractive at current levels. According to Bloomberg, French farmers' unions threatened to block highways around Paris on Monday after government efforts to defuse recent protests with promises of additional aid fell short. The country's powerful FNSEA union, along with the Young Farmers' Union, 
has called for a siege of the capital even as Prime Minister Gabriel Attal pledged further support during a visit to farmers on Sunday. According to Bloomberg, the Bank of Japan will exit its ultra-loose monetary policy once the Federal Reserve begins lowering interest rates, resulting in yen gains and higher sovereign bond yields this year, according to hedge fund manager Stephen Jen. The yen will likely strengthen to $130 per dollar this year while 10-year Japan government bond yields could rise to 1.5% to 2%, wrote Jen, the chief executive officer of Horizon SLJ Capital Limited in a note. The Japanese currency was trading around 148.10 and the 10-year yield was at 0.71% on Monday in Tokyo. According to Bloomberg, the Red Sea shipping crisis is sending waves through Asia's fuel markets, hoisting costs even on routes that don't use the waterway, while spurring sellers to reduce cargo premiums to offset the higher freight. Rates for shipping products such as gasoline have jumped as some vessels sail longer distances to avoid the Red Sea after attacks by Iran-backed Houthi rebels. That's tightened the market, first boosting costs of long-distance routes via the Middle East, and now spilling into voyages within Asia. According to Bloomberg, Britain's economists are finding it increasingly difficult to forecast inflation, a phenomena that's upending markets and likely to make the Bank of England more cautious about lowering interest rates. Not once in the past year did the consensus estimate of economists match the figure reported by the Office for National Statistics, the worst record in the group of seven economies, an analysis of Bloomberg surveys shows. For four months of 2023, Inflation fell outside the range of estimates predicted by the group of UK forecasters, also underperforming the rest of the G7. According to Reuters, Ryanair on Monday trimmed its profit forecast for the year to the end of March after some online travel agents stopped selling its flights in December, forcing it to cut fares to fill seats. Europe's largest airline by passenger numbers said it expected an after-tax profit of between 1.85 billion and 1.95 billion euros for the year to end March, down from its November forecast of 1.85 billion and 2.05 billion euros. According to Reuters, Taiwan's trade-dependent economy likely grew faster in the fourth quarter than the third thanks to strong domestic consumption and a rebound in exports, a Reuters poll showed on Monday. Gross domestic product is expected to have expanded 4.35% in the October to December period versus a year earlier, the poll of 22 economists showed. GDP grew 2.32% year-on-year in the third quarter. According to Reuters, Swiss solar panel maker Meyer Berger is facing the brunt of competition from China and is warning it may have to close its loss-making production plant in Germany unless the government steps in with financial support. Chinese manufacturers are deliberately selling goods in Europe far below their own production costs, chief executive Gunter Erfurt told Reuters. According to Reuters, the killing of three U.S. troops and wounding of dozens more on Sunday by Iran-backed militants is piling political pressure on President Joe Biden to deal a blow directly against Iran, a move he's been reluctant to do out of fear of igniting a broader war. Biden's response options could range anywhere from targeting Iranian forces outside to even inside Iran, or opting for a more cautious retaliatory attack solely against the Iran-backed militants responsible, experts say. According to Reuters, Malaysia's King al-Sultan Abdullah has called for government stability, warning that the country risked losing investors and falling behind its competitors due to prolonged political turmoil. In a rare, wide-ranging interview with local and foreign media this month, al-Sultan Abdullah, who will step down from the throne on Tuesday, also proposed future monarchs play a larger role representing Malaysia in international affairs. According to Reuters, Toyota Motor said it would suspend shipments of some models including the Helix truck and Land Cruiser 300 SUV after irregularities were found in certification tests for diesel engines developed by affiliate Toyota Industries. A special investigative committee had found irregularities during horsepower output testing for the certification of three diesel engine models. The development of the engines had been commissioned to Toyota Industries, Toyota Motor said in a statement on Monday. According to Reuters, firms that check environmental, social and governance claims made by companies will be asked to follow a proposed new ethics code to help combat greenwashing, the chief of a global standards body told Reuters. Trillions of dollars have flowed into investment funds touting green credentials, but these can be misleading, a practice known as greenwashing. As a result, 
companies are increasingly being asked to disclose more about their actions on climate change and other issues such as board diversity. According to Reuters, major Boeing customer Ryanair said on Monday it was hopeful the 737 MAX 10 would be certified before the end of the year and flying at the start of 2025. We'd be hopeful that the MAX 10 will be certified somewhere towards the back end of 2024, Ryanair Chief Financial Officer Neil Sorahan said in an interview. You might not see the first aircraft flying in 24, maybe in the first quarter of 25. According to Reuters, European banks' run of soaring profits and record shareholder payouts faces a big test this week when investors assess how fast the boost from higher interest rates is fading, and if a weak economic outlook will make life tougher. Spain's BBVA reports fourth quarter numbers on Tuesday, Santander on Wednesday, Deutsche Bank and BNP Paribas on Thursday and Unicredit the following Monday. Other Eurozone banks and Switzerland's UBS follow. According to Reuters, Asian stocks started the week on the front foot, as new steps by Beijing to stabilize the local market outweighed the drag on sentiment from the liquidation of property giant China Evergrande. However, investors were also sensitive to geopolitical risks with oil rising after a Houthi missile attack caused a fire on a fuel tanker in the Red Sea and a drone attack killed three U.S. troops in Jordan. According to Bloomberg, Samsung Electronics Company will feature Baidu Inc.'s Ernie Bot as a key attraction of its new Galaxy S24 smartphone series in China. The South Korean maker has pitched its latest handset family as the first of a wave of AI smartphones, and Baidu's artificial intelligence tools will help with text summarization, organization and translation, Baidu said in a statement. It will also provide the back-end support for Samsung's Circle to Search feature, which is handled by Alphabet Inc.'s Google in other markets. According to Bloomberg, runaway demand for Novo Nordisk A.S.'s diabetes and weight loss drugs has propelled the Danish drugmaker into a class all its own atop Europe's pharmaceutical sector, and the stock's Europe 600 index, so achieving its 2023 targets should be a shoe in when it reports this week. More pressing will be how it expects to keep up with the appetite as it scales up production of the Ozempic and Wegovi blockbusters, and fends off competition from Eli Lilly Co.'s Monjaro and Zepbound. According to Reuters, three U.S. service members were killed and at least 34 wounded in a drone attack by Iran-backed militants on U.S. troops in Jordan, said U.S. President Joe Biden, the first deadly strike against U.S. forces since the Israel-Hamas war erupted. The attack, which Iran said it was not involved in, marks a major escalation in tensions that have engulfed the Middle East, amid concerns Israel's war against Hamas militants could spread into a wider conflict involving Iran's proxies in Lebanon, Yemen and Iraq. According to Bloomberg, sign up for the India Edition newsletter by Manaka Doshi, an insider's guide to the emerging economic powerhouse, and the billionaires and businesses behind its rise, delivered weekly. Billionaire Gota Madani's renewable energy unit arranged the money to pay back its $750 million bond due in September, with some provided by the Indian tycoon and his associates' own cash pile. According to Reuters, Shell's exit from Nigeria's onshore oil sector highlights risks oil majors face in Africa's biggest exporter but has raised hopes that local firms could reverse the output decline from the Niger Delta, industry officials and analysts said. Shell, which pioneered Nigeria's oil industry, is the most prominent Western company to exit the Delta, a region blighted by pollution, oil theft and pipeline vandalism. Those issues have for years stymied investment and throttled production and government finances. According to Reuters, Ryanair has told Boeing that if any U.S. customers refuse to take delivery of 737 MAX 10 aircraft, that it would buy them, at the right price, executives said on Monday. The Irish airline, Europe's largest by passenger numbers, already has 150 firm orders for the MAX 10, the largest jet in the 737 family, and options for 150 more, with the first deliveries due in 2027. According to Reuters, China's Supreme Court and Hong Kong's Department of Justice said on Monday that they signed an arrangement on the reciprocal recognition and enforcement of judgments in civil and commercial cases effective immediately in both places. The arrangement reduces the need for parties to re-litigate the same dispute in the mainland and Hong Kong courts, reducing the risks, legal costs and time usually associated with the cross-boundary enforcement of such judgments, 
Hong Kong's Department of Justice said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, a key backer of Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's fragile ruling alliance urged the nation's politicians to stop undermining the government, arguing the country needs political stability to focus on pressing economic challenges. Abang Johari Tun Open, who leads Malaysia's largest state, Sarawak, on the island of Borneo, said he's told his political colleagues to stop creating so many problems for the 14-month-old government. That followed reports that opposition leaders met in Dubai last month to discuss undercutting Anwar, Malaysia's fifth prime minister since 2018. According to Reuters, Microsoft's early lead in artificial intelligence has the software heavyweight stock market value poised to pull decisively ahead of Apple's over the next five years, 13 institutional investors unanimously agreed ahead of the tech titan's quarterly results this week. Microsoft shares have surged 7% so far in 2024, recently sending its stock market value above $3 trillion and dethroning Apple as the world's most valuable company. As of Friday, the Redmond, Washington software maker's market capitalization was a few billion dollars above Apple's. Asked which would be more valuable five years from now, all 13 investment strategists and portfolio managers consulted by Reuters last week said they expect Microsoft to outpace Apple. According to Reuters, Israel's sovereign credit rating could be cut if the war with Palestinian Islamist group Hamas expands to other fronts, but if this does not happen it should be able to weather the war's economic fallout if it makes needed budget changes to offset higher spending, an SP Global Ratings director said. SP in October affirmed Israel's ah, rating but revised Israel's outlook to negative from stable, citing risks that the Israel-Hamas war could spread more widely with a more pronounced impact on the economy and security situation in the country. According to Bloomberg, oil rose after separate attacks in the Middle East that killed U.S. troops in Jordan and hit a fuel tanker in the Red Sea, an escalation of tension in the region that accounts for around a third of the world's crude output. The White House said Iranian-backed militants killed three soldiers and wounded others in a drone assault, which Tehran denied carrying out. That followed a Houthi missile strike Friday on a vessel operated on behalf of Trafagora Group carrying Russian fuel, the most significant yet on an energy-carrying ship. According to Reuters, wholesome shares were indicated to open significantly higher in pre-market activity on the Swiss stock exchange on Monday after the building materials giant unveiled plans to separate and list its North American business. The company's shares were indicated 7.09% higher according to pre-market information from Julius Baer. According to Bloomberg, better prospects for consumer prices will ultimately prompt officials to cut interest rates, European Central Bank Vice President Luis de Guindas said. There has been good news regarding the evolution of inflation, and that, sooner or later, will end up being reflected in the monetary policy, he told Spain's RNE Radio on Monday. We are going to be dependent on the data, we don't have any kind of calendar, it will depend on the evolution of inflation and I am optimistic regarding the evolution of inflation. According to Reuters, European equities kick started the week on a subdued note, after scaling two-year highs in the previous session, as heavy losses in travel stocks partially outweighed strong performances in the energy sector. The Pan-European Stocks 600 Index was flat at 483.66 points on Monday, as of 0823 GMT. The benchmark index hit its highest level in two years and clocked the best week in three months on Friday. According to Reuters, Qatar Energy and US-based Accelerate Energy signed on Monday a 15-year agreement to supply 1 million metric tons per year of liquefied natural gas to be delivered to Bangladesh for 15 years from January 2026. The deal is the latest in a series state-owned Qatar Energy has with European and Asian partners tied to its massive North Field expansion project, which is expected to lift Qatar's LNG production to 126 MTPA by 2027 from 77 MTPA now. According to Reuters, Hungary is open to using the European Union budget for a proposed €50 billion Euro aid package to Ukraine, Prime Minister Viktor Orban's political director said on social media platform X. Orban has been a vocal critic of the bloc's support for Kyiv and kept ties with the Kremlin since Russia went to war in Ukraine in February 2022. He previously blocked a revision of the EU budget that included the Ukraine aid. According to Bloomberg, 
A Hong Kong High Court judge has appointed Alvarez Marcel as the liquidator for China Evergrande Group, after giving a wind-up order that sets the stage for one of China's biggest liquidation cases. Judge Linda Chan named Alvarez Marcel as liquidator at a so-called regulating order hearing on Monday afternoon. A regulating order gives the court regulatory power over the winding-up process, according to Hong Kong law. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank should start bringing down interest rates sooner rather than later, and in small steps rather than abruptly, ECB Governing Council member Mario Centeno told Reuters. The ECB held its key rate at a record high 4% on Thursday, a decision Centeno agreed with despite not having voting rights this time. ECB Chief Christine Lagarde said the consensus around the table was that it was premature to discuss rate cuts. According to Yahoo Finance, with the SP500 closing at a record high this week, a debate on Wall Street has predictably broken out over whether stocks are overvalued. But multiple strategists told Yahoo Finance this week that market history shows these fears are ultimately misplaced. According to Bloomberg, investors wondering where the SP500 is headed, at least for the next month or so, will want to pay attention to three key days this week. Between Tuesday and Thursday, Five big tech companies with a combined market value of more than $10 trillion will report earnings. Microsoft Corp., Alphabet Inc., Meta Platforms Inc., Amazon.com Inc. and Apple Inc. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve will issue its decision on interest rates, followed by Chair Jerome Powell's press conference where he's expected to discuss the outlook ahead. According to Yahoo Finance, the Federal Reserve is widely expected to hold interest rates steady this Wednesday at its first policy meeting of 2024. But investors will be looking for any clues about when cuts could begin. Will it be March, May or later? Markets may not get a clear answer. But Fed followers do expect Central Bank Chair Jay Powell to begin preparing investors for an eventual loosening, even if he doesn't specify timing. According to Bloomberg, Reddit Inc. is weighing feedback from early meetings with potential investors in its initial public offering that it should consider a valuation of at least $5 billion, according to people familiar with the matter, even as it is estimated below that figure in the volatile market for shares of private companies. The San Francisco-based social media company and its advisors are targeting a valuation in the mid-single-digit billions, the people said, asking not to be identified as the information is private. The ultimate figure will depend on the IPO market's nascent recovery, the people said. Reddit is considering a possible listing as soon as March, the people said. According to Reuters, China's manufacturing activity in January likely shrank for the fourth straight month though at a slower pace than in December, a Reuters poll showed, indicating the country's sprawling sector was still struggling to regain momentum at the start of 2024. The official purchasing manager's index likely nudged up to 49.2 in January from December's 49.0, according to the median forecast of 35 economists in a poll. The 50-point mark separates growth from contraction. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank's next move will be a rate cut and it is more likely to come in June than April as inflation is going in the right direction but more data points are needed for an assessment, Slovak Central Bank chief Peter Kazimir said on Monday. The ECB kept rates unchanged at a record high last Thursday but sounded confident that inflation was coming under control, fueling already widespread bets in the market that policy easing could start in early spring. According to Reuters, Wholesome's biggest shareholder has given his backing to the building material company's plan to spin off its North American business through a listing on the New York Stock Exchange. Swiss billionaire Thomas Schmidheine the great-grandson of Wholesome's founder and a former chairman of the company, owns around a 7% stake in the company, according to his spokesperson. According to Reuters, a top U.S. bank regulator will on Monday propose new regulations for bank mergers and acquisitions in a bid to increase transparency around the process, while ensuring some deals do not slide through automatically without sufficient scrutiny. The move by the Office of the Controller of the Currency comes amid industry criticism that regulators are too opaque in their handling of bank deals, and as analysts expect more consolidation among small lenders struggling with flagging margins. According to Reuters, hedge funds snapped up battered Chinese stocks over three days last week at the fastest pace in more than five years, Goldman Sachs wrote in a note to clients.
The cumulative net buying of Chinese equities for January 23-25 marked the biggest three-day shopping spree in more than five years, Goldman wrote in the note published on Friday and seen by Reuters on Monday. According to Reuters, the White House Artificial Intelligence Council is meeting Monday, three months after President Joe Biden signed an executive order that aims to reduce the risks AI poses. White House Deputy Chief of Staff Bruce Reed, who will convene the council meeting Monday, said in a statement the federal government had made significant progress in the prior 90 days on AI, saying Biden's directive to us is move fast and fix things. According to Reuters, the U.S. Department of Defense plans to develop a program to estimate prices and predict supplies of nickel, cobalt and other critical minerals, a move aimed at boosting market transparency but one that throws a new, uncertain variable into global metals markets. The program, which received little attention after it was announced on a Pentagon website in October, is part of Washington's broader efforts to jumpstart U.S. production of critical minerals used in weapons manufacturing and the energy transition. According to Reuters, the Indian rupee hovered in a tight range in Monday's session and closed largely unchanged as traders awaited the outcome of the U.S. Federal Reserve meeting and India's federal budget for fresh cues. The rupee closed at 83.1325 against the U.S. dollar, barely changed from its close at 83.1150 in the previous session. According to Reuters, European shares were at their highest since January 2022 and bond yields dipped on Monday, the start of a packed week with big corporate earnings, European inflation data, Federal Reserve and Bank of England meetings and U.S. jobs numbers incoming. Europe's broad stocks 600 index nudged slightly higher helped by strength across the energy sector on renewed tensions in the Middle East, reaching fresh two-year highs after its biggest weekly gain in over two months last week. According to Reuters, Switzerland's Wholesome will spin off 100% of its North American operations in a New York flotation which could value the business at $30 billion, the building materials giant said on Sunday, as it also named a new chief executive. Milion Gutovic, currently head of Europe at Wholesome, will replace Jan Jenisch as CEO beginning May 1, said the company, one of the world's biggest cement makers. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank's next move will be an interest rate cut but policymakers speaking on Monday spared on the exact timing of the move are the trigger for action. The ECB kept its key rate unchanged at a record high 4% last Thursday but sounded confident that inflation was coming under control, fueling already widespread bets in the market that policy easing could start in early spring. According to Reuters, Russia's energy ministry has proposed restricting flights over Russian energy facilities, the Vidomosti Daily reported on Monday, after a spate of Ukraine-linked attacks this month on oil infrastructure. The newspaper said that under the plan, only aircraft deployed to protect energy facilities, and planes of top Russian officials or of visiting foreign officials would be allowed to fly with special permission in the designated zones. According to Reuters, European telecommunications lobbying group Etno on Monday again urged big tech to help pay for the rollout of 5G and broadband as it released data showing Europe trails the United States and Asia in 5G networks, cloud computing, investments and revenues. The comments by Etno, whose members include Deutsche Telekom, Orange, Telefonica and Telecom Italia, come as the European Commission readies a proposal on digital networks and infrastructure on February 21. According to Reuters, Denmark on Monday sent a frigate towards the Red Sea, where it will participate in a U.S.-led coalition to safeguard commercial traffic against attacks by Yemen's Houthi militants. Shipping firms have since December diverted hundreds of vessels around southern Africa's Cape of Good Hope in order to avoid attacks by the Iranian-backed Houthis. The journey around Africa takes 10 to 14 days longer and is more costly than the passage via the Red Sea and Suez Canal. According to Reuters, Germany and Greece hired banks to sell new bonds on Monday, according to memos from lead managers seen by Reuters. Germany will sell a 30-year bond due the 15th of August 2054, while Greece will sell a 10-year bond that matures on the 15th of June 2034, the memos said. According to Reuters, Nigeria's naira dropped to a record low against the dollar on the thinly traded official market on Friday. FMDQ exchange data showed on Monday, as the currency swung widely to overshoot the unofficial parallel market rate. 
The Naira fell as low as 1,421 to the dollar. During trading on Friday, FMDQ data showed, compared with around 1,400 Naira quoted on the parallel market. The currency later closed at 891.90 Naira on the official market. According to Reuters, Italy's data protection authorities said on Monday it told OpenAI that its artificial intelligence application ChatGPT breaches data protection rules. Following a probe started last year, the regulator believes there are elements indicating potential violations, it said in a statement. According to Reuters, it took a stock market crash, a housing crash and a pandemic to kill the last three U.S. economic expansions. But of all the risks facing a resilient economy right now, the Federal Reserve may top the list, as U.S. central bankers debate when to lower the restrictive interest rates used to beat inflation that now seems to be in steady decline. According to Reuters, investors that use shareholder resolutions to pressure companies on environmental and social issues said they are worried that an ExxonMobil lawsuit bypassing the U.S. securities regulator could undermine their influence. Under appointees of U.S. President Joe Biden, the Securities and Exchange Commission has made it more difficult for companies to prevent these resolutions from moving to a shareholder vote by appealing to the regulator. According to Reuters, Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Szijjarto arrived in Ukraine for talks with senior officials on Monday, days before a European Union summit that will seek agreement on a financial aid package that has been held up by Budapest. Shijarto's talks in the western city of Uzhhorod with Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuliba and Presidential Chief of Staff Andriy Yermak follow weeks of Hungarian opposition to the EU providing 50 billion euros in aid. According to Reuters, Italy's data protection authorities said on Monday it told OpenAI that its artificial intelligence chatbot application ChatGPT breaches data protection rules. The Italian watchdog, known as Garante, one of the European Union's most proactive in assessing AI platform compliance with the bloc's data privacy regime, last year briefly banned chat GPT over the alleged breach of EU privacy rules. According to Reuters, oil prices climbed on Monday after a drone attack on U.S. forces in Jordan added to worries over supply disruption in the Middle East as Houthi rebels stepped up their attacks on vessels in the Red Sea, hitting a Trafagora-operated fuel tanker. Risks of a widening conflict in the Middle East come at the same time that Russian refined product exports are set to fall, with refineries and a major oil terminal under repair following drone attacks by Ukraine. According to Reuters, Microsoft is expected to report a 15.8% jump in quarterly revenue, its best growth in nearly two years, as rising adoption of its products infused with generative AI fuels demand for its cloud services. Thanks to its early lead in artificial intelligence, Microsoft is likely to cement its lead as the biggest company by market value this year. The software giant snagged the top spot on Friday, with a valuation of $3 trillion, toppling by a small margin Apple, the most valuable company since 2011. According to Reuters, U.S. main index futures were subdued at the start of a week packed with major events including the Federal Reserve's rate decision and big-ticket tech earnings that could set the tone for Wall Street after a recent record-breaking rally. The SP500 notched an intraday record high for four sessions in its fifth all-time closing high this month, picking up pace from 2023, after a slow start to the year as investors reassessed their bets over the timing of rate cuts. According to Reuters, Crypto companies based outside the EU will only be able to directly serve customers within the bloc under very limited conditions to avoid unfair competition, the European Securities and Markets Authority proposed on Monday. The EU approved the world's first comprehensive rules for crypto markets last year, known as MICA, a groundbreaking move in an online sector where national borders have been hard to police. According to Reuters, the Bank of England is likely to hint this week it is aware that the time start cutting rates is nearing, but that is unlikely to bring sterling, this year's second best performing major currency, down with it. The consensus in markets is that one or two of the Monetary Policy Committee's hawks will stop voting for rate hikes at their meeting on Thursday, but Barclays analysts say this is unlikely to derail sterling. According to Reuters, Indian government bond yields started the week flattish, while they awaited the U.S. Federal Reserve policy decision in the domestic budget announcement for near-term directional cues. 
India's benchmark 10-year yield ended at 7.1735% on Monday, following its previous close at 7.1760%. According to Bloomberg, five of the so-called Magnificent Seven tech megacaps will report earnings next week, with artificial intelligence investment, regulatory challenges and waning China demand among the shared themes in focus. Along with Microsoft Corp., which just hit a historic $3 trillion market valuation, Alphabet Inc., Meta Platforms Inc. and Amazon.com Inc. are set to post record revenues for the quarter, underscoring the strength of the U.S. economy. Even so, they are likely to be asked about further cost reductions after the significant job cuts they have each embarked on in recent weeks. According to Yahoo Finance, Amazon IS expected to start rolling out ads on its prime video streaming service beginning Monday in the US, and Wall Street is bullish on the tech behemoth massively disrupting the shifting media market. Prime video subscribers will automatically be defaulted to the ad-supported tier at the current monthly price of $14.99 for Prime members and $8.99 for non-Prime members. For those who want to pay up for the premium, ad-free version, the price will go up by $3 a month, respectively. According to Bloomberg, Iran sought to distance itself from a deadly attack on a U.S. base in Jordan by Tehran-backed militants as President Joe Biden faced mounting pressure to respond fiercely against the Islamic Republic. Resistance groups in the region do not take orders from the Islamic Republic of Iran, Foreign Ministry spokesman Nasser Kanani said on Monday. He was referring to what's often called the axis of resistance, a network of militias in territories from Yemen to Iraq and Gaza that are funded by Tehran and share its opposition to the U.S. and Israel. According to Yahoo Finance, the nation's tax filing season begins Monday, as the Internal Revenue Service starts accepting and processing 2023 federal tax returns. Taxpayers have until April 15 to file without an extension. The IRS expects to receive nearly 130 million individual tax returns by the deadline, with more than 93% of those expected to be e-filed. You can file forms such as 1040-1040A and 1040EZ electronically or mail a paper return to the agency. But the fastest and easiest way to file and receive refunds is through electronic filing and direct deposit. According to Reuters, European Union governments are not discussing financial coercion to force Hungary to agree to financing for Ukraine that Budapest has been blocking since December, a senior European official said in a statement on Monday. The statement came in response to a story in the Financial Times which said that the European Union would sabotage Hungary's economy if Budapest blocked fresh aid to Ukraine at a summit this week, according to a confidential plan. According to Bloomberg, Wholesome Limited rose after outlining plans to spin off its operations in North America into a separate U.S.-listed entity, seeking a valuation of more than $30 billion. Shares of the Swiss cement maker gained as much as 6.7% in early Zurich trading, the most since 2020 in pushing up competitors Buzzy Spa and Heidelberg Materials AG, and valuing the company at just under 39 billion Swiss francs. According to Reuters, Eurozone government bond yields dropped on Monday as markets fully priced in a first 25 basis point rate cut by the European Central Bank in April, in a week packed with crucial economic data. Still, the euro area's benchmark bond yield was on track to record its first monthly rise since September 2023 as markets scaled back what investors deemed overly ambitious bets on policy rate reductions at the end of 2023. According to Reuters, French farmers blocked major highways to Paris on Monday as they pursue protests over a range of grievances, despite several measures announced by the government. Here are some of the issues that have prompted the protest movement and what the government could do next. According to Yahoo Finance, U.S. stock futures were little changed on Monday, as investors braced for a busy week packed with big tech earnings updates, a Federal Reserve rate decision in the crucial U.S. jobs report. Futures on the Dow Jones Industrial Average in the SP500 clung to the flatline, getting off to a muted start after the major stock gauges notched weekly wins. Contracts on the tech-heavy Nasdaq 100 ticked higher, up 0.2%. According to Bloomberg, European government bonds rallied while the euro fell on Monday amid growing speculation the European Central Bank will cut interest rates sooner rather than later. 
ECB official François Villeroy de Galhau signaled over the weekend that policymakers could lower borrowing costs at any moment this year and all options are open at upcoming meetings. The market responded by firming wagers on a quarter-point decrease as early as April, which is now fully priced. Just before last week's monetary policy meeting, the odds of that were 60%. According to Reuters, Volkswagen on Monday announced its board member Thomas Ulbrich will take over as head of technical development in China. Thomas Ulbrich, member of the board of management for new mobility at the Volkswagen brand since 2022, will be appointed head of development at the Volkswagen Group in China on 1 April 2024, the German carmaker said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, Sophie Technologies Inc. reached profitability for the first time taking the fintech one step closer to Chief Executive Officer Anthony Nodo's goal of turning the former anti-bank into a top-10 financial institution. Fourth quarter net income was $48 million, the first profit under generally accepted accounting principles since the company went public in 2021, according to a statement Monday. The figure surpassed analysts' average estimate of $9.9 .9 million for the quarter. Earnings per share were $0.02, beating estimates of zero cents and up from a five cent loss a year earlier. According to Reuters, one of the aircraft industry's most influential leaders believes Boeing will face a heavier regulatory backlash if there are further production snags such as the one suspected of causing a door plug blowout on an Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 jet. If there is one more significant problem, the FAA will stop production. Air Lease Corp. Executive Chairman Stephen Udvar Hazy told reporters at the Airline Economics Conference in Dublin on Monday, referring to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. According to Bloomberg, the European Central Bank won't rush into cutting interest rates to avoid undoing progress on inflation, according to Governing Council member Peter Casimir, who said June is more likely than April for a first move. Acting hastily based on short-term surprises without having more clarity about the medium term would be risky, he said in an opinion piece published Monday. It could easily derail the progress we have made toward reaching our target. According to Reuters, UBS and Credit Suisse lost some ground in their combined share of the Swiss funds business last year, the Asset Management Association of Switzerland said on Monday, predicting that this would fall further. The market share of the combined bank, which became a single entity last year after UBS stepped in to rescue Credit Suisse, fell to 37.6% in 2023, down from 39.3% the previous year. According to Reuters, therapy developer Fractal Health said on Monday it was aiming for a market valuation of up to $762 million in its U.S. initial public offering. The company plans to raise up to $132 million by selling about 7 million shares priced between $16 and $18 each. According to Bloomberg, BYD Co.'s preliminary 2023 net income was 29 billion yuan to 31 billion yuan, according to a Monday filing to the Shenzhen Stock Exchange, missing the average estimate from analysts of 31.5 billion yuan. The company, which overtook Volkswagen AG as China's best-selling car brand in 2023, said earnings increased on higher overseas sales and good cost control. The preliminary earnings represent an increase of 74.5% to 86.5% from 2022. According to Reuters, European shares were at their highest since January 2022 and bond yields dipped on Monday, at the start of a packed week of big corporate earnings, European inflation data. Federal Reserve and Bank of England meetings and U.S. jobs numbers. Europe's broad stock's 600 index briefly touched a fresh two-year high and was last flat on the day after its biggest weekly gain in over two months last week. According to Reuters, when Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun delivers the company's fourth quarter results on Wednesday, he will be doing it while the planemaker is in the middle of its biggest safety crisis since the two fatal 737 MAX crashes in 2018 and 2019. The company, long a symbol of America's manufacturing prowess, is in the crosshairs of regulators, politicians and airlines following a harrowing mid-air cabin panel blowout on a passenger-filled 737 MAX 9 jet operated by Alaska Airlines earlier this month. According to Reuters, the troubled European Cigna holding company is facing claims totaling 8.613 billion euros, its court-appointed manager said on Monday 
a figure that is 70% more than debts originally flagged last year when it filed for insolvency. The insolvency manager, Christoph Stapf, said that it had recognized only a fraction of the claims so far, just 80.3 million euros, and that many of the claims arrived without necessary supporting materials or late. According to Reuters, General Motors CEO Mary Barra on Tuesday will face the challenge of convincing investors the number one U.S. automaker will not be stuck in the same slow lane this year as Tesla and other rivals. Tesla's warning last week that it expected a year of slow growth and continued pricing pressure weighed on other automakers' shares. According to Reuters, the White House said on Monday that talks to secure a new release of hostages held by Palestinian Islamist group Hamas in Gaza were constructive and promising but there was still a lot of work to be done. A series of negotiations in recent days involving CIA Director William Burns and U.S. Middle East envoy Brett McGurk focused on securing the release of hostages as well as a humanitarian pause in the Israel-Hamas war in Gaza. According to Reuters, Amazon and robot vacuum maker iRobot said Monday they would end their plans to merge in the face of opposition from EU antitrust regulators. Amazon said its proposed $1.4 billion acquisition of iRobot had no path to regulatory approval in the European Union. Reuters reported earlier this month the deal would be blocked by European Commission antitrust regulators and that its main concerns were that Amazon may thwart iRobot rivals on its online marketplace, especially in France, Germany, Italy, and Spain. According to Bloomberg, global equities trading near all-time highs are heading for a difficult phase, as slowing economic growth starts to dent earnings estimates, according to UBS Group AG strategists. Forecasts for significant revenue gains in an environment where growth in gross domestic product is stalling is a very unusual mismatch, the strategists, led by Andrew Garthwaite, said in a Monday note. They now expect earnings to disappoint with profit margins threatened by rising wages and a lagged impact from higher interest rates. According to Reuters, Jim Esposito, co-head of the Global Banking and Markets Division at Goldman Sachs, plans to depart after nearly 30 years at the bank, according to a memo seen by Reuters on Monday. One of the most senior executives at Goldman, Esposito joined in 1995 as a salesperson for emerging markets debt, according to his profile on the bank's website. According to Bloomberg, Swiss franc bears are growing in number as the currency retreats from last year's rally, but a top market forecaster says the current consensus may not go far enough. The franc is again overvalued, said David Alexander Meyer, an economist at Julius Baer Group Limited, the top FX forecaster in the fourth quarter according to data compiled by Bloomberg. The Swiss export industry has always been like a treadmill, with a track record of coping with an appreciating exchange rate very well. According to Bloomberg, Amazon.com Inc. has abandoned its planned $1.4 billion acquisition of Roomba maker iRobot Corp. after clashing with European Union regulators who had threatened to block the deal. The decision is a sign of the intense pressure Amazon is facing to prove its actions don't harm competition as its influence grows in retail, cloud computing and entertainment. The breakup also spares Amazon the task of stemming the losses incurred by Bedford, Massachusetts-based iRobot which has seen its fortunes sour in recent years. According to Reuters, Eli Lilly is in talks with the German government to try to end a ban on the public health system paying for weight loss treatments, Spiegel magazine cited a company executive as saying on Monday. Representatives of the U.S. maker of obesity and diabetes drugs are in a good dialogue with the federal government, Ilya Yufa, president of Lilly International, was quoted as saying. According to Reuters, Brazil's central government posted a primary budget deficit of 230.5 billion reais in 2023, Treasury data showed on Monday, signaling a steep fiscal deterioration amid rapid expenditure expansion. According to Reuters, the financiers behind the world's airline industry are meeting for the first time since a mid-air cabin blowout pushed Boeing into a new safety crisis, compounding a shortage of airplanes as regulators stepped up factory inspections. Lessers, bankers and airlines meeting in Dublin, home to a booming global air finance sector, are examining the supply consequences of a recent partial grounding of the Boeing 737 MAX 9, following the Alaska Airlines incident earlier in January. According to Reuters, 
Three U.S. service members were killed and as many as 34 wounded, United States officials said on Sunday, after a drone attack in Jordan that they linked to Iranian-backed militants. The attack is a major escalation of the tensions in the Middle East sparked by Hamas' attack in Israel on October 7 and Israel's retaliatory strikes that have devastated Gaza. According to Reuters, the United States and Britain are taking action against a network of people who targeted Iranian dissidents and opposition activists for assassination at Iran's direction, the U.S. Treasury Department said on Monday. The network is led by Iranian narcotics trafficker Naji Ibrahim Sharifi Zindashti and directed by Iran's Ministry of Intelligence and Security, Treasury said. According to Bloomberg, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro's backsliding on his promise of free and fair elections is likely to prompt the return of some U.S. sanctions, though the Biden administration will probably refrain from imposing the stiffest penalties related to oil, according to analysts. Maduro has jailed aides to the opposition presidential candidate, Maria Karina Machado, and Venezuela's top court last week upheld a ban against her and others holding office. That dimmed the glimmer of hope that Maduro would face real competition in his quest for re-election this year. According to Reuters, the European Central Bank said on Monday it would lower the bar for lending to central banks from outside the European Union in times of crisis. The changes should make it easier for smaller economies outside the EU's borders, such as Ukraine, to borrow euros from the ECB if they are under financial stress. According to Reuters, Germany trade union Verdi on Monday announced a near nationwide local transport strike just hours after train drivers ended their longest railway strike to date. Industrial action will take place in all federal states except Bavaria on Friday, February 2, Verdi deputy chairwoman, Christine Bachel, said in Berlin. According to Reuters, Spain's Supreme Court has dismissed a €4 billion euro claim filed by toll road operator Aberdees against the Spanish government over a highway concession, the court said on Monday, causing a sharp drop in shares of Aberdees owners. Shares of Axe and Hochtief were down 7.9% and 8.7% respectively following the news, with Jefferies analysts saying some in the market had been expecting an award of at least €1 billion euros from the court. Axe has a 50% total stake in Aberdees and Hochtief 20%. According to Reuters, Canadian apparel maker Gildan Activewear said on Monday it would hold an annual and special shareholder meeting on May 28 amid investor pressure to replace a majority of its board members and reinstate Glenn Chamondy as CEO. The date of the meeting was set after a requisition by activist investor Browning West, which expanded its list of board candidates to eight from five and requested a special meeting to be held without delay to reconstitute the board to bring Chamondy back as CEO. According to Yahoo Finance, artificial intelligence has captured the world's imagination, but for 2024, investors shouldn't expect to see much in the way of financial tailwinds yet, outside a couple of exceptions to the rule. Direct monetization of AI services will remain out of reach for most companies, Gil Luria, managing director at DA Davidson, told Yahoo Finance. While businesses are ramping up their AI usage, Software makers will likely include AI features as a perk of their existing offerings or as a way to prompt upgrades instead of a paid standalone product. According to Bloomberg, it's a busy week for earnings, with Exxon Mobil Corp., Chevron Corp., and Shell PLC kicking off Big Oil's reporting season in Nucor Corp., Cleveland Cliffs Inc. and United States Steel Corp., highlighting the metals sector. The OPEC Plus Monitoring Committee also meets to discuss production levels. Here are five notable charts to consider in global commodity markets as the week gets underway. According to Bloomberg, Europe, long reliant on Russian natural gas, has nearly severed its dependency on the Kremlin in less than two years. Its preferred replacement, gas from the US, is widely viewed as abundant, politically palatable and less likely to be choked off than pipelines from Siberia. It's also growing riskier by the day. According to Reuters, Britain's plan to ban disposable vapes hit some e-cigarette stocks and drew a mixed reaction from experts on Monday, with some concerned it could hurt efforts to stem the death and disease caused by cigarettes. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said single-use vapes had driven an increase in youth vaping in the country, with the government citing figures showing the number of children using vapes had tripled over the past three years. According to Reuters, 
Arrival said it received a delisting and stock trading suspension notice from the Nasdaq, sending the British electric vehicle company's shares down about 15% on Monday. Trading in Arrival's stock will be suspended from January 30, as per the letter. According to Bloomberg, one of last year's best wagers in emerging market debt is getting a fresh boost from bets the Federal Reserve will finally begin cutting interest rates. Optimism is sweeping through domestic bond markets as investors wager that the Fed will soon start lowering rates, with Wall Street set to scour this week's meeting for clues on timing. Alongside a weaker dollar, a potential U.S. pivot would help coax central bankers in emerging markets to ease, resulting in a potential windfall for holders of local currency debt. According to Bloomberg, Senator Elizabeth Warren and three Democratic colleagues urged Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell to lower interest rates to help bring down housing costs ahead of the central bank's policy meeting this week. High interest rates have aggravated the country's persistent crisis of housing access and affordability, the senators wrote in a letter dated January 28. As the Fed weighs its next steps in the new year, we urge you to consider the effects of your interest rate decisions on the housing market and to reverse the troubling rate hikes that have put affordable housing out of reach for too many. According to Reuters, the U.S. Treasury Department's top sanctions official traveled to Baghdad on Sunday, a Treasury spokesperson said, as Washington seeks to counter Iran's sanctions evasion in Iraq and bring the country's financial sector in line with international standards. Treasury's Under Secretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Brian Nelson, traveled to Iraq from Sunday to Monday, where he met with senior Iraqi officials, including Prime Minister Mohammad Shia al sadani as part of continuing work on countering illicit finance, the spokesperson said. According to Yahoo Finance, the stock market is still all about tech. New data from FactSet shows that while strategists have called for a broadening out of the market rally, big tech companies are expected to be the drivers of Q4 earnings growth in the SP500. According to Reuters, Mexican lender Unifin has concluded its bankruptcy proceedings, the company said in a filing on Monday, following the approval of its plan to restructure debts by a local court. The company will now focus on implementing closing steps set out in the proceedings, aiming to achieve continuity while stabilizing its business operations, according to the filing. According to Bloomberg, Toyota Motor Corp's workers' union is seeking a bonus of 7.6 months' worth of salary an increase of almost a full month's worth of wages, as it prepares for annual compensation negotiations with the Japanese carmaker. The bargaining group, which has not yet put forth demands for average salary increases, said on Monday it will make a final decision on what it expects based on job categories and rankings at a council meeting on February 9, before informing the company. According to Reuters, the light at the end of the tunnel is the I train barreling down the track. The light at the end of the tunnel is the I train barreling down the track. According to Yahoo Finance, another top Goldman Sachs executive is leaving, raising new questions about the race to succeed CEO David Solomon and capping a period of high profile management and board changes for the Wall Street giant. Jim Esposito, who had been co head of Goldman's Global Banking and Markets Division, will leave after nearly three decades, according to a memo viewed by Yahoo Finance. The Wall Street Journal was the first to report the departure. According to Reuters, Eurozone government bond yields dropped on Monday as markets fully priced in a first 25 basis point rate cut by the European Central Bank in April, in a week packed with crucial economic data. Still, the euro area's benchmark 10-year bond yield was on track to record its first monthly rise since September 2023 as markets scaled back what investors deemed overly ambitious bets on policy rate reductions at the end of 2023. According to Reuters, Stellantis said on Monday it was starting volume production in Europe of large-sized and mid-sized hydrogen fuel cell vans, expanding its range of zero-emission commercial vehicles. The Franco-Italian automaker said in a statement it would produce the larger vans at its Gliwice plant, in southern Poland, and the mid-sized ones in Hordain, northern France. According to Reuters, UBS is forging ahead with its integration of Credit Suisse but two key investors fear the Swiss bank could be on a collision course with regulators because of its size. UBS took over its rival in a state-orchestrated rescue last year creating a bank with a balance sheet of more than $1.6 trillion, nearly twice the size of the Swiss economy. 
Its shares are up about 50% since March, when the deal was announced, outperforming the stock's European Banks Index. According to Reuters, pharmaceutical companies are due to receive by Thursday the U.S. government's opening proposal for discounts it is seeking on 10 high-cost medicines, an important step in the Medicare health program's first-ever price negotiations. Five Wall Street analysts and two investors told Reuters they expect the negotiations over prices that will go into effect in 2026 to result in cuts ranging from the statutory minimum of 25% to 60% when the final numbers are set in September. According to Reuters, Argentina's bond, currency and stock markets edged lower on Monday, though they avoided a sharp slide after the government was forced to pull a key fiscal section from its major omnibus bill aimed at reforming the country's embattled economy. The South American country's libertarian president Javier Malay agreed on Friday to yank changes to taxation and pensions from the mammoth bill that is working its way through Congress, where the government's minority bloc faces stern opposition. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields fell on Monday, with volume less than the average, as bond investors look to a slew of events and data this week that will determine where interest rates are headed this year. Investors are bracing for the Federal Open Market Committee rate decision and statement on Wednesday and U.S. non-farm payrolls data on Friday. There are no fireworks expected in terms of the rate decision where the Federal Reserve is seen holding interest rates steady, but some investors believe the U.S. Central Bank could drop its hiking bias. According to Reuters, Aston Villa were docked three points on Monday for fielding an ineligible player in a women's FA League Cup group stage game but still went through to the quarterfinals at Manchester United's expense. United reacted by saying they were very disappointed with the outcome of the independent tribunal and did not understand the rationale. According to Reuters, European shares surged to their highest since January 2022 and bond yields on both sides of the Atlantic eased on Monday even as markets scaled back what investors deemed had been overly ambitious bets on policy rate reductions at the end of 2023. Stocks on Wall Street were little changed in the US dollar advanced at the start of a packed week of big corporate earnings, European inflation data, Federal Reserve and Bank of England policy meetings and US jobs numbers for January. According to Reuters, Wholesome Chief Executive Jan Jenisch on Monday described his company's North American operation, which the Swiss building materials firm plans to spin off next year, as a rock star business. Although he would hardly say much else about a business he wants to list in New York next year, with a potential $30 billion valuation, he may be right, analysts and investors said. According to Bloomberg, Amazon.com Inc. has abandoned its planned $1.4 billion acquisition of Roomba maker iRobot Corp. after clashing with European Union regulators who had threatened to block the deal. The decision is a sign of the intense pressure Amazon is facing to prove its actions don't harm competition as its influence grows in retail, cloud computing and entertainment. The breakup also spares Amazon the task of stemming the losses incurred by Bedford, Massachusetts-based iRobot, which has seen its fortunes sour in recent years. According to Bloomberg, financial firms in the European Union look set to be hit by a new ESG requirement that they lobbied hard to avoid. The European Parliament and the European Council are moving toward an agreement that banks, asset managers and insurers should be viewed in the same way as other companies when it comes to ensuring that their value chains aren't subject to environmental or human rights violations, according to a January 24 joint document seen by Bloomberg. According to Yahoo Finance, Warner Brothers' discovery stock fell more than 2% in midday trading on Monday after Wells Fargo downgraded the stock from overweight to equal weight, citing a risky earnings setup to kick off the year. We've taken a thorough scrub of our 2024 WBD earnings estimates and come out more negative, Wells Fargo analyst Steve Cahall wrote in a note to clients on Monday. Lower earnings have been the story since the merger, and the trend limits future multiple expansion. According to Reuters, private equity group Advent International is considering options, including a potential sale, for its British parcel delivery service Every, two sources familiar with the matter said. Advent holds a 75% stake in Every and is working with advisors on its options for the business, which could be valued at around £2 billion including debt, one of the people, speaking on condition of anonymity, told Reuters. According to Reuters, 
Cuban President Miguel Díaz-Canel and top officials on Monday tried to reassure the country price rises and tax hikes were necessary, days ahead of an expected five-fold increase in the price of gasoline, but said more explanation may be needed. Cuba in late December announced a series of measures, including hikes in the prices of fuel and public transport, aimed at narrowing a yawning deficit. Critics have described the increases as inflationary, ill-timed and lacking incentives for domestic production. According to Reuters, the head of Scandinavian airline SAS criticized the European Commission on Monday for taking a cautious approach to consolidation in the industry at a time when the EU is adding to the cost of flying. Anko van der Werf, whose long-struggling carrier is the largest in Scandinavia, listed the European Union's flagship scheme to help curb greenhouse gas emissions as among the reasons why the EU clearly wants flying to be more expensive. According to Reuters, the World Health Organization on Monday warned that global shortages last year of popular diabetes medicines that are also used for weight loss, such as Novo Nordisk's Ozempic, had been linked to rising reports of suspected counterfeits. The organization said fake versions of the drugs, which belong to a class called GLP-1 agonists, are most often sold and distributed through unregulated outlets, including social media platforms, and carry serious health risks. According to Reuters, Renault on Monday said it had decided to cancel the IPO of its electric vehicle unit Ampere as stock market conditions are not optimal for the listing to be in the best interests of the group, its shareholders and Ampere. It added in the statement that the team at Ampere is fully committed to executing its strategy and building its track record and that the Renault Group will continue to fund the development of Ampere until it reaches break even in 2025. According to Reuters, the World Trade Organization will likely cut its estimates for goods trade growth for 2023 and 2024 due to a less buoyant global economy and the potential impact of disruptions to shipping through the Suez Canal, its chief economist said. The WTO had estimated in October that merchandise trade growth would be 0.8% for 2023 and 3.3% for 2024. But it now believes growth this year is threatened by geopolitical tensions such as those affecting the Suez Canal due to attacks on ships in the Red Sea by Yemen's Iran-backed Houthis. According to Reuters, Deutsche Bank's chief executive on Monday warned about the threat of right-wing extremism in the lender's home market saying the rise of the nationalist alternative for Germany risks investment in Europe's largest economy. The comments at a bank reception in Berlin are the most extensive yet on the subject from the CEO of Germany's top bank. They are also the latest in a series of similar warnings from German companies and their CEOs following an investigative report about a meeting, where plans for mass deportations of citizens of foreign origin were discussed with some AFD members. According to Reuters, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration barred Boeing from expanding the production of its best-selling 737 MAX aircraft last week, after a mid-air cabin panel blowout forced an Alaska Airlines-operated MAX 9 to make an emergency landing. The FAA launched a formal investigation into the 737 MAX 9, grounding the planes for safety checks and tightening oversight of Boeing itself on January 12, after the Alaska Air incident. According to Bloomberg, a fast-moving atmospheric river coming off the Pacific Ocean will drench northern and central California on Wednesday and then head for the, the southern half of the state. Northwest California will likely get the worst of the storm, with as much as 3 to 6 inches of rain, according to Bob Oravik, a senior branch forecaster at the U.S. Weather Prediction Center. The central and southern portions of the state will receive 1.5 to 2 inches. The storm will blow through most areas in about six hours, limiting total rainfall. According to Yahoo Finance, GM investors are looking for the big three automaker to continue its strong run of quarterly performance, with Q4 results on deck for Tuesday morning. The six-week United Auto Workers strike against GM concluded at the end of October, impacting GM production at select plants for about a month in Q4. GM said the strike cost the automaker around $200 million in the last two weeks of September, and another $600 million in the first three weeks of October. According to Reuters, bond investors are expecting the Federal Reserve to drop its bias toward hiking interest rates at a policy meeting this week to prepare the market for what could be multiple rate cuts this year and the first since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Portfolio managers have increased bets on long-duration U.S. Treasuries ahead of the meeting, 
reflecting expectations that yields on those securities will decline as the U.S. central bank moves toward cutting rates. As the economy slows, longer duration bonds tend to outperform other assets. According to Reuters, Venezuelan opposition candidate Maria Karina Machado on Monday said she would not move aside in favor of a substitute despite a decision by the country's Supreme Court last week to uphold a ban barring her from holding office. The Friday ruling bars Machado, a 56-year-old industrial engineer, from registering for presidential elections scheduled for the second half of this year, with the court saying she supported U.S. sanctions, had been involved in corruption and had lost money associated with Venezuela's foreign assets. According to Reuters, legal drama, Suits, took the top spot as the most streamed title ever from another audience favorite, The Office, in 2023, while shows on Netflix dominated overall streaming charts, according to Nielsen data. Suits, racked up 57.7 billion viewing minutes in 2023, thanks to its availability on both Netflix and Comcast-owned Peacock. The Office had generated 57.1 billion viewing minutes in 2020 amid pandemic-induced lockdowns, according to the report. According to Bloomberg, Renault saw scrapped plans to list its electric vehicle business, reversing course due to a lack of appetite for share sales amid a slowdown in EV demand. The French maker of Twingo and Megane e-tech cars said, current equity market conditions are not met to optimally pursue the IPO process, according to a statement Monday. The global market for initial public offerings last year sank to its worst levels in over a decade, according to data compiled by Bloomberg, owing to the surge interest rates. According to Bloomberg, International Business Machines Corp. delivered a company-wide ultimatum to managers who are still working remotely. Move near an office or leave the company. All U.S. managers must immediately report to an office or client location at least three days a week, regardless of current work location status according to a memo sent on January 16 viewed by Bloomberg. Badge in data will be used to assess individual presence, and shared with managers and human resources, Senior Vice President John Granger wrote in the note. According to Bloomberg, Kathy Wood is buying the dip in Tesla Inc. even as Wall Street sours on the stock. The fund manager has scooped up nearly 690,000 shares of the electric vehicle maker across two exchange-traded funds operated by her firm ARC Investment Management in January. The ETF spent an estimated $141 million on shares, according to calculations by Bloomberg based on share closing prices. According to Reuters, Qatar's prime minister on Monday said he hoped U.S. retaliation for an attack that killed three U.S. troops in Jordan would not undercut progress toward a new Israel-Hamas hostage release deal in weekend talks. I hope that nothing would undermine the efforts that we are doing or jeopardize the process, Qatari Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdulrahman bin Jassim Al Thani told a Washington think tank audience when asked if U.S. retaliation for a drone attack by Iran-backed militants could scuttle an emerging deal. According to Reuters, it is the end of an era for big oil in California, as the most populous U.S. state divorces itself from fossil fuels in its fight against climate change. California's oil output a century ago amounted to it being the fourth largest crude producer in the U.S., and spawned hundreds of oil drillers, including some of the largest still in existence. Oil led to its car culture of iconic highways, drive-in theaters, banks and restaurants that endures today. According to Reuters, the head of the world's largest aircraft Lesser Aircap dismissed calls for leadership changes at Boeing and said the planemaker is under no illusion about what needs to be done in the wake of a door plug blowout on a Boeing 737 MAX 9. I don't think that's helpful at all. Do we really think someone else comes in tomorrow and is going to be able to just all of a sudden magic overnight? Aircap chief executive Angus Kelly told Reuters of calls by some analysts for leadership changes. According to Yahoo Finance, Microsoft will report its second quarter earnings after the bell on Tuesday, as Wall Street looks for signs that the company's vast artificial intelligence investments continue to pay off. Microsoft has been one of the biggest beneficiaries of the AI trade, sending shares jumping 50% over the last 12 months and Microsoft's market capitalization over $3 trillion. As of Monday afternoon, Microsoft was the wealthiest company in the world by market cap, outmuscling longtime rival Apple which has been stung by recent stock downgrades on fears of sluggish iPhone sales in China. According to Reuters, 
A strong economic outlook is helping U.S. stocks weather a rise in Treasury yields, though that could change if factors such as tighter monetary policy drive yields higher or if they move up too fast, Goldman Sachs strategists said. The SP 500 and 10 year Treasury yield had been negatively correlated, meaning they have moved in opposite directions, since long term yields began rising last July. Goldman equity strategists led by David Costin said in their latest weekly kickstart note. According to Bloomberg, the Biden administration will restore sanctions on Venezuela's energy sector if the country upholds its ban on an opposition candidate from running for president, two U.S. officials said, a move that will chill recent efforts to improve ties between the two adversaries. The U.S. will allow a six-month suspension on sanctions to expire in April if opposition candidate Maria Karina Machado is barred from running, and is also considering additional measures to punish Venezuela, according to the officials, who asked not to be identified discussing private deliberations. According to Bloomberg, President Joe Biden's administration is weighing a response to the deadly attack on U.S. forces in Jordan that's tough enough to deter Iran and its proxies without sparking direct warfare with the Islamic Republic, according to officials and experts. We will do whatever we need to do to protect our forces going forward, but certainly at the end of the day we are not looking to engage in a wider conflict but merely to ensure regional security and stability, Major General Pat Ryder, a Pentagon spokesperson, said Monday in an interview on Bloomberg Television. According to Bloomberg, vulnerable Democrats in swing states are increasingly sounding the alarm about Biden environmental policies that risk turning off cost-conscious moderate voters they need to win at the ballot box. The warnings pose an election-year challenge for U.S. President Joe Biden, whose plans to slash power plant pollution, boost electric vehicle sales and pause natural gas exports are popular with climate activists, but politically poisonous for some congressional Democrats. According to Reuters, despite the buzz over generative artificial intelligence last year, the technology's impact on the advertising business of Alphabet and Meta platforms is likely to be muted when the companies report fourth quarter results this week, though investors are mapping out its future potential. The search giant has rolled out AI tools that help advertisers target audiences in a less costly way and decide how their marketing budgets should be distributed across Google's ad network. Facebook parent Meta is using generative AI to create different variations of ad campaigns. According to Reuters, Sophie Technologies' stock surged 19% on Monday after the financial technology firm made its first ever profit and beat estimates. The digital financial service, which offers student loan refinancing and mortgages, among other financial products, posted a profit of $0.02 cents per share in the fourth quarter, compared to a loss of $0.05 cents a year earlier. According to Bloomberg, the beginning of the Federal Reserve's unwinding of its balance sheet is starting to look further off and more drawn out than some expect, according to Wrights and ICAP. For the past year and a half, the Fed has been letting as much as $60 billion in treasuries and as much as $35 billion in agency debt holdings mature each month. But, a debate has been simmering over whether the central bank is misjudging how much it can tighten without causing dislocations in places like the repo market, an essential part of the plumbing of the financial system. According to Reuters, Wayne Lapierre, the longtime chief of the National Rifle Association, defended himself at a corruption trial on Monday, saying New York's attorney general should have given the gun rights group a pat on the back for implementing reforms. Under questioning by NRA lawyer Sarah Rogers, Lapierre said the group underwent a course correction to improve accounting practices in 2018, two years before Attorney General Letitia James sued it for violating state law governing nonprofits. According to Reuters, the PGA Tour, which organizes professional golf tournaments primarily in North America, is close to finalizing an investment from a U.S. consortium, Bloomberg News reported on Monday citing people familiar with the matter. The initial investment from Strategic Sports Group could be about $3 billion, with an additional tranche from the Saudi Public Investment Fund, according to the report. According to Reuters, Pharmaceutical companies are due to receive by Thursday the U.S. government's opening proposal for what are expected to be significant discounts on 10 of its high-cost medicines, an important step in the Medicare health program's first-ever price negotiations.
five Wall Street analysts and two investors told Reuters they expect the negotiations over prices that will go into effect in 2026 to result in cuts ranging from the statutory minimum of 25% to as much as 60% when the final numbers are set in September. According to Reuters, the U.S. Treasury Department should do more to ensure that major tech firms, including Meta Platforms and Alphabet, comply with sanctions against foreign firms that advertise on their platforms, a top lawmaker said on Monday. Democratic U.S. Senator Mark Warner, who heads the Senate Intelligence Committee, wrote a letter to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen in which he said the Treasury Department was failing to ensure sanctions compliance in digital advertising markets. According to Yahoo Finance, Daytona, Florida. Porsche triumphed this weekend at the crown jewel of American sport car racing, securing an overall win at the Rolex 24 at Daytona International Speedway with its 963 GTP race car. The grueling 24-hour endurance race is not just a test of racing teams' stamina and performance under pressure, it's also a pressure cooker for testing new technology and reliability. It's no wonder why more and more big auto brands have signed on to compete. According to Reuters, the U.S. Treasury said on Monday it expects to borrow $760 billion in the first quarter, $55 billion lower than the October estimate primarily due to forecasts for increased net fiscal flows and higher cash balance. The first quarter financing estimate assumes a cash balance of $750 billion at the end of March, the Treasury said in a statement. According to Bloomberg, after the worst quarter in its roughly two-decade history, ESG's future is once again a subject of intense debate. Against a backdrop of attacks by the Republican Party and lackluster returns, ESG funds in the U.S. bled more than a net $5 billion in the final three months of 2023. Combined with a huge decline in the pace of inflows in Europe, the global market for funds claiming to pursue environmental, social or governance goals suffered its first ever net redemptions last quarter, according to Morningstar Inc. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. Treasury reduced its estimate for federal borrowing for the current quarter despite a widening in the fiscal deficit, a reduction unexpected by many dealers. The Treasury Department cut its net borrowing estimate for January through March to $760 billion from a previous prediction of $816 billion released in late October. U.S. debt managers kept their estimate for the Treasury's cash balance for the end of March at $750 billion. According to Bloomberg, Wall Street is widely expecting the U.S. Treasury to announce a final increase to its sales of long-term debt this week, after a steady ramp-up in supply that sometimes tested buyers' appetites for funding a widening budget deficit. The Treasury Department is expected on Wednesday to follow through on its November guidance of a third round of increases in its so-called quarterly refunding auctions of notes and bonds. That would put the total at $121 billion, not far from the record sizes during the COVID crisis. According to Bloomberg, this week will be crucial in determining whether stock valuations, particularly for megacap big tech companies, are sustainable, according to J.P. Morgan Chase Co.'s Marco Kolanovich. That's especially the case given that investors are pricing in significant for earnings growth in anticipation of interest rate cuts coming sooner than Federal Reserve officials project, the strategist wrote in a note to clients on Monday. Five big tech companies with a combined market value of more than $10 trillion report results this week, including Apple Inc., Microsoft Corp., and Alphabet Inc. According to Reuters, Grupo Financiero Benorte, one of Mexico's largest financial companies, on Monday launched Binio, a digital bank which will offer savings accounts and personal loans with the aim of adding 2.8 million new clients in the next five years. Banco Benorte, which is owned by the company, already has 12 million clients, making it the second largest in the country when measured by credit portfolio. According to Reuters, the Canadian dollar strengthened to a two-week high against its U.S. counterpart on Monday as investor sentiment remained upbeat ahead of a Federal Reserve policy decision this week. The loonie was trading 0.3% higher at 1.3411 to the greenback, or 74.57 U.S. cents, its strongest level since January 15. According to Reuters, U.S. Treasury yields slid on Monday at the start of a busy week that includes potentially market-moving jobs data and a Federal Reserve decision after the Treasury Department said it would need to borrow less than its previous estimates. 
The U.S. Treasury said late in the session that it expects to. According to Reuters, the European Union will need 1.5 trillion euros per year of investments to meet its 2050 net zero emissions target, research backed by green EU lawmakers said on Monday. The European Commission is set to recommend next week that the EU cuts net emissions 90% by 2040, from 1990 levels, and outline the huge upfront increase in investments needed to get Europe on track to have zero net emissions by 2050. According to Reuters, Ukraine and Hungary said they had laid the ground for a meeting of their leaders during talks in western Ukraine on Monday and agreed to work together on the divisive issue of Hungarian minority rights in Ukraine. Hungarian Foreign Minister Peter Shijarto held talks with his Ukrainian counterpart Dmitro Kuliba and Presidential Chief of Staff Andriy Yermak, days before an EU summit that will seek agreement on an aid package for Kyiv that has been held up by Budapest. According to Reuters, Canadian miner First Quantum Minerals said on Monday it intends to sell the 120,000 tons of copper concentrate stored near the Punta Rincon port. First Quantum's Panama unit said in a statement that due to the lack of options available to finance the essential activities of preservation and safe operations, selling the copper concentrate is the best alternative to generate resources to cover the costs. According to Bloomberg, bankrupt pharmacy chain Rite Aid Corp. hired liquidators at the request of company lenders even as the retailer continues negotiating with at least two potential buyers, a person familiar with the chain's revival efforts said. Two liquidation consultants, Hilco Merchant Resources and COVALENTS1B360 Capital Partners, will help the company run going out of business sales for any stores to be shuttered. U.S. bankruptcy judge Michael Kaplan gave the company permission to hire the liquidators during a court hearing held by video on Monday. According to Reuters, American Airlines was sued on Monday in a proposed class action by two customers who said the carrier stripped them of 1.1 million frequent flyer miles after they doubled up on credit cards offering mileage bonuses. Ari and Shanna Natchison said American wrongly accused them of fraud for opening multiple A Advantage accounts, with cards issued under co-branding arrangements with Citibank and Barclays. According to Reuters, the final details of an agreement to address record migration levels at the U.S.-Mexico border are still being negotiated in the Senate, a spokesperson for Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut told Reuters on Monday. No deal has been announced yet, according to the representative for Murphy, a negotiator involved in the talks. According to Reuters, Vail on Monday reported 10.6% growth in its fourth-quarter iron ore production compared with a year earlier bringing its annual production to above its estimates. The company produced 89.40 million metric tons of iron ore in the last three months of 2023, it said in a securities filing. According to Bloomberg, Morgan Stanley downgraded the maker of Jack Daniel's whiskey to a hold equivalent rating on Monday, citing weaker-than-expected demand for spirits after strong growth during the COVID-19 pandemic. Although Brown Foreman Corp lowered its annual forecasts in December. Analyst Eric Sirotiv views the company's outlook as aggressive given muted industry growth and lackluster market share trends. He sees a risk that U.S. demand for spirits will remain subdued for the next several quarters following two years of outsized growth during the stay-at-home era. According to Yahoo Finance, consumers' wallets are strapped, and that's good news for America's discount retailers. A combination of student loan repayments, reduction of SNAP benefits, and drag from tax refunds could stir up a $10 billion headwind against consumer spending in 2024, according to a J.P. Morgan analysis led by analyst Matthew Boss. According to Bloomberg, Vail Saw, the world's second-largest iron ore supplier, posted a bigger-than-expected increase in production last quarter in a result that may undermine prices of the key ingredient in steel. The Brazilian mining giant delivered 89.4 million metric tons last quarter, easily beating the 83 million ton average estimate among analysts tracked by Bloomberg. Output was up from both a year ago and the previous three months, with the full-year result ahead of guidance. In a statement Monday, the Rio de Janeiro-based firm reiterated its 2024 guidance. According to Bloomberg, New Zealand needs more time to get inflation back into the central bank's 1-3% target band even though the economy is weaker than expected, Reserve Bank Chief Economist Paul Conway said. The currency gained. Monetary policy is working, 
with the economy slowing and inflation falling, Conway said in a speech on Tuesday in Wellington. But we still have a way to go to get inflation back to the target midpoint. According to Reuters, Toyota Motor said on Monday it is urging the owners of 50,000 older U.S. vehicles to get immediate recall repairs because an airbag inflator could explode and potentially kill motorists. The Japanese automaker said the Do Not Drive advisory covers some 2003-2004 model year Corolla, 2003-2004 Corolla Matrix, and 2004-2005 RAV4S with Takata airbag inflators. According to Bloomberg, Argentina President Javier Malay is further watering down his sweeping reform bill in an attempt to get it through Congress, the clearest sign yet that the libertarians' shock therapy economic plans face major political hurdles. Malay on Monday conceded on some emergency executive powers that would have allowed him to unilaterally set policy on fiscal and pension matters for up to two years, spokesman Manuel Adorni said in a press conference. Those changes followed his decision to shelve the bill's most important austerity measures on Friday, as he sought to push the so-called omnibus bill closer to the legislative finish line. According to Reuters, a look at the day ahead in Asian markets. The court-ordered liquidation of debt-laden China Evergrande was expected and hardly rattled Asian investors aside from its bondholders and property developers meaning Japan's employment data Tuesday and the midweek U.S. Federal Reserve policy statement could be better attention grabbers. According to Reuters, Whirlpool forecast full-year sales and profit below analysts' estimates on Monday, as the home appliance maker navigates pricing pressure from rivals and higher expenses, sending its shares down about 4% in extended trading. The white goods maker said it eliminated about $800 million in costs in 2023, and expects to cut up to $400 million more this year. According to Bloomberg, burned by years of underperformance in Chinese domestic stocks, local investor appetite for overseas equities is running so high that it's fueling huge price distortions in funds tracking these assets. Chinese traders are willing to pay as much as 40% more than the value of the underlying assets in some exchange-traded funds in order to obtain exposure to foreign stocks. That's triggering trading halts in a number of ETFs as well as purchase limits. According to Reuters, Microsoft said on Monday it has named former general manager of Call of Duty, Johanna Ferries as the president of game publishing unit Blizzard Entertainment. Microsoft, which bought Activision Blizzard in a $69 billion deal last year, said insider Matt Cox has taken over the role of senior vice president and general manager of Call of Duty, effective immediately. According to Bloomberg, Warren Buffett can cause executives angst when he invests in their companies. Japan's trading firms illustrate this point. Berkshire Hathaway Inc. bought stakes in them in August 2020, which raised their international profile and attracted other investors. Over the next four years, the five companies outperformed the broader market. According to Reuters, New York State's controller has asked Boeing CEO Dave Calhoun to explain how it is handling its current crisis in the wake of a door plug blowout on its 737 MAX 9 aircraft, according to a letter seen by Reuters. The comptroller's office oversees the state's pension system, which held a 0.16% stake in the U.S. planemaker at the end of September 2023. According to Reuters, Teradyne, a supplier of semiconductor testing equipment, pulled manufacturing worth about $1 billion out of China last year, a Teradyne spokesperson said on Monday, after U.S. export regulations led to supply chain disruptions. A factory in Suzhou was the company's main manufacturing site for its semiconductor test equipment, which it subcontracted to Flextronics. According to Reuters, J.P. Morgan will extend the watch period on the weighting of sovereign bonds of Venezuela and those of oil company PDVSA in its widely followed MB Index series, with the next update to come no later than the end of next month, J.P. Morgan said on Monday. The bonds have had a zero weighting since 2019 when Washington imposed sweeping sanctions on Caracas that included a ban on U.S. investors' trading of Venezuelan debt. According to Reuters, American Airlines Group said on Monday about 600 jobs at its customer support team would be impacted, as the carrier works to rejig the team. The immediate impact will be on roughly 600 jobs, but the company is looking to accommodate employees in other roles, which will mitigate the impact, Carolyn Trulive, 
Vice President of Reservations and Service Recovery, told Reuters. According to Reuters, cloud and security services firm F5 forecast second quarter revenue above Wall Street estimates on Monday, anticipating steady demand for its cloud services, sending its shares up more than 8% in aftermarket trading. F5, which provides software and hardware that support applications over the internet, has seen an increase in demand for its enterprise solutions as more businesses are aggressively digitizing their operations and moving to the cloud. According to Reuters, Elon Musk, Neuralink's billionaire founder, said the first human received an implant from the brain chip startup on Sunday and is recovering well, in a post on social media platform X on Monday. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration had given the company clearance last year to conduct its first trial to test its implant on humans. According to Reuters, Manchester United said on Monday they had dealt with an internal disciplinary matter involving Marcus Rashford after he missed training last Friday and was absent from Sunday's 4-2 FA Cup fourth-round win against Newport County. The Premier League club had said initially that the England forward, who was reportedly seen at night spots in Belfast earlier in the week, was not well enough to be in the squad for the FA Cup match. According to Bloomberg, most Asian stocks and bonds were poised for gains on Tuesday after Wall Street was buoyed by the Treasury unexpectedly cutting its quarterly borrowing estimate to $760 billion. Australian stocks and bonds rose in early trading after the Treasury's move drew investors' attention to a widening budget deficit, spurring U.S. 10-year yields to drop six basis points. Stocks in China, however, look to be clouded by the looming impact of China Evergrande Group's liquidation order and ongoing concern about its struggling economy. According to Reuters, steelmaker Nucor Corp. posted a decline in its fourth quarter profit on Monday, hurt by lower pricing of its products and sales volumes across all its segments. The Charlotte, North Carolina-based company produces iron and steel products as well as recycles scrap metal used in automotive, railroad and construction industries across North America. According to Bloomberg, the U.S. wants cloud service providers such as Amazon.com Inc. and Microsoft Corp. to identify and actively investigate foreign clients developing artificial intelligence applications on their platforms, part of a widening tech conflict between Washington and Beijing. The Biden administration proposal, released Monday, requires the firms to reveal foreign customers' names and IP addresses. Amazon and its peers, which include Alphabet Inc.'s Google, would need to develop a process to collect those details and report any suspicious activity, according to draft rule published Sunday. According to Reuters, Boeing confirmed late on Monday it is withdrawing a request it made to the Federal Aviation Administration last year seeking an exemption from a safety standard for its 737 MAX 7 that is awaiting certification. Senator Tammy Duckworth, who chairs an aviation subcommittee, said last week she opposed Boeing's exemption request that would prematurely allow the 737 MAX 7 to enter commercial service. According to Bloomberg, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida is pressing forward with his campaign for higher wages as his slumping support rate levels out and speculation re-emerges that he could opt to call a general election this year. Kushida will underscore the need for pay rises to bolster the economy in a speech to Parliament Tuesday that will lay out his agenda for the new session, according to Kyoto News. Dismayed at wage rises falling short of inflation and angered by a widespread political slush fund scandal, voters sent his disapproval rating to a record level in a recent poll. The speech is planned for 1 p.m. Japan time. According to Bloomberg, Japan's labor market showed further signs of tightness in December driven by a manpower shortage across a swath of sectors in a closely watched development as companies engage in annual wage negotiations with unions. The unemployment rate fell to 2.4 percent, the Ministry of Internal Affairs reported Tuesday, its lowest reading since January. The number of people with jobs rose by 380,000 from a year earlier, a 17th consecutive increase. Industries that led the increase in employment included manufacturing, lodging and food services. According to Bloomberg, oil was steady as the market waited for a U.S. response to the deadly attack on American troops in Jordan, which could risk an escalation of tensions in a region key to global crude production. West Texas Intermediate was close to $77 a barrel in early Asian trading after losing 1.6 percent on Monday, despite the drone assault on U.S. soldiers, which Iran sought to distance itself from.
Brent crude also closed lower near $82. Data showing that OPEC Plus appears to be making a slow start to its latest output cuts put downward pressure on prices. According to Bloomberg, Elon Musk said that the first human patient has received a brain implant from his startup Neuralink Corp. A significant step forward for the company that aims to one day let humans control computers with their minds. In a post on X, formerly Twitter, Musk said that the patient is recovering well, and that initial results of the procedure were promising. According to Bloomberg, Rebellions Inc. secured $124 million from investors including KT Corp to accelerate the development of a next-generation AI chip, underscoring growing interest in the hardware that drives artificial intelligence. The South Korean startup closed a Series B financing led by the wireless carrier after snagging additional investment from Singapore's Pavilion Capital, KT's data center subsidiary KT Cloud Company and Shinhen Venture Investment Co. New backers include Corela Capital from France and Japan's DGDV, the company said in a statement on Tuesday. According to Bloomberg, China's benchmark government bond yield fell to its lowest in nearly 22 years on mounting expectations for further monetary easing amid a fragile economic recovery and stock market sell-off. The yield on the 10-year sovereign note slipped to 2.48%, a level unseen since 2002. The world's second-largest economy is suffering from an extended housing slump and its stock market is under pressure from weak investor sentiment, leading to calls for policymakers to deploy more stimulus to boost growth. According to Reuters, the London Metal Exchange is studying Hong Kong as a location to expand its global metal warehouse network. Five sources with knowledge of the matter said, hopeful success there might open the door to mainland China, its ultimate target. Registering warehouses in China, the world's largest consumer of industrial metals, to store metal traded on the LME has been a strategic aim since Hong Kong exchanges and clearing bought the LME in 2012 for $2.2 billion. According to Reuters, oil prices rose in early trade on Tuesday as escalating geopolitical tensions in the Middle East continued to fuel supply concerns. Brent crude futures rose 25 cents, or 0.3 percent, to $82.65 a barrel by 0105 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude was up 31 cents, or 0.4 percent, at $77.09 a barrel. According to Reuters, the dollar held narrow ranges against its major peers on Tuesday, as traders awaited the Federal Reserve's monetary policy decision for clues on when the U.S. central bank might cut rates. In the meantime, jobs opening data from the U.S. Department of Labor statistics due later in the day will act as a preview to the closely watched payroll report to be released on Friday. According to Reuters, the United States vowed to take all necessary actions to defend American forces after a drone attack killed three U.S. troops in Jordan, while Qatar said it hoped U.S. retaliation would not damage regional security or undercut progress toward a new Gaza hostage release deal. Sunday's attack by Iran-backed militants was the first deadly strike against U.S. troops since the Israel-Hamas war erupted in October and marks a major escalation in tensions that have engulfed the Middle East. According to Bloomberg, shares of China Evergrande New Energy Vehicle Group Limited tumbled after its heavily indebted parent China Evergrande Group received a liquidation order from a Hong Kong court, raising questions over their future ownership. Its shares fell 13%, adding to the 18% decline on Monday. Evergrande Property Services Group Limited was little changed. While trading in the parent is still halted, the subsidiaries applied for a resumption after yesterday's suspension. According to Bloomberg, did China's steel industry really get within a whisker of meeting Beijing's production cap last year? If official data are to be believed, 2023 output ended up barely changed at just over 1 billion ton, thanks to an unprecedented 15% year-on-year plunge in output in the last month to a six-year low. In data going back to 2004, it's only the second time that December has been lower than November, and never by that margin. According to Reuters, Holisys Automation Technologies said on Monday its special committee has retained a recommendation that shareholders vote for Ascendant Capital's acquisition deal as the offer from a Dajung Group-led consortium was not superior. A consortium led by Dajung Group earlier on Monday said it has proposed to acquire all outstanding shares of the U.S.-listed Holisys at $29.50 each, 
up from its previous offer of $29, in negotiations with the special committee that started on Sunday. According to Bloomberg, Chinese policymakers have stepped up their efforts in recent weeks to support the economy and sliding markets, underscoring concern about a recovery hampered by a property crisis, deflation and weak consumer confidence. The measures have included unleashing more long-term cash for banks, tightening rules on the lending of shares for short selling and broadening developer access to loans. Still, investors may need to see more to restore their trust in China's markets. According to Reuters, Asian shares fell on Tuesday, hurt by the court-ordered liquidation of property giant China Evergrande while rising geopolitical tensions propped up oil prices and kept a lid on risk appetite ahead of the Federal Reserve's meeting. U.S. Treasury yields remained under pressure in Asian hours, keeping a lid on dollar movement, after the Treasury Department said it would need to borrow less than its previous estimates. According to Bloomberg, Chinese stocks slid on Tuesday, with a benchmark heading for a third straight day of declines, underscoring the need for policymakers to take more steps to revive investor confidence. The MSCI China index slumped more than 2% in the morning session. Losses have resumed after hopes of a stimulus package as well as a move by the central bank to cut the reserve requirement ratio. The amount of cash lenders must keep in reserve helped stoke a three-day rally in shares last week. According to Reuters, China's local governments issued a net 3.96 trillion yuan in special bonds in 2023, exceeding the annual quota. Data from the Chinese Finance Ministry showed on Tuesday. As the world's second biggest economy struggles to stage a strong post-COVID rebound, analysts say the government is likely to step up spending this year to drive growth after last October allowing an additional 1 trillion yuan in sovereign bonds to be issued. According to Reuters, Vietnam and the Philippines agreed on Tuesday to boost cooperation among their coast guards and to prevent untoward incidents in the South China Sea, in an announcement during a state visit by President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The two Southeast Asian countries have competing claims over some parts of the South China Sea, a conduit for $3 trillion of annual shipborne trade that China claims almost in its entirety. According to Reuters, almost half of companies surveyed by the American Chamber of Commerce in Taiwan consider geopolitical concerns a deterrence to expanding or investing in the island but that number has significantly dropped even as China tensions remain. China which views democratically governed Taiwan as its own territory despite the objections of the Taipei government, has been stepping up military and political pressure to assert those sovereignty claims. According to Reuters, Pony Ma, chief executive and co-founder of Tencent Holdings, has said that the company's video games business faces great challenges from competitors but is catching up in artificial intelligence development. Ma, speaking at Tencent's annual meeting in a stadium in Shenzhen on Monday, said that the company has been resting on its laurels in gaming while competitors have delivered new hits. Video games account for more than 30% of Tencent's revenue. According to Reuters, use of the Chinese yuan to pay for Russian exports has increased 86 times to 34.5% of total payments over the past two years, Russia's central bank governor Elvira Nabulina told Russian state news agency RIA in an interview published on Tuesday. The comments were Nabulina's first public remarks after she cancelled several scheduled appearances and amid media speculation about her health. She said use of the Chinese currency in Russian imports payments had also risen sharply, up eightfold to 36.4% over the same period. According to Bloomberg, Singapore said investment commitments last year slowed to 12.7 billion Singapore dollars from a record 22.5 billion Singapore dollars in 2022 with authorities viewing the performance as a show of confidence in the city-state in a tough global business environment. The commitments are expected to create 20,045 jobs over the next five years, according to the Economic Development Board, the country's investment promotion agency. About 58% of those jobs are likely to be in services, 26% in research and development and the remaining 16% in manufacturing. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin is on course to advance for a fifth straight month in what would be the token's longest such winning streak since a pandemic-era rally oiled by easy money. The largest digital asset has risen about 2% in January, a month of pronounced swings sparked by the rollout of the first U.S. spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds and shifting views on the outlook for monetary policy. 
According to Bloomberg, Elon Musk's Neuralink Corp. has performed its first brain implant on a human, a major step toward the billionaire's goal of one day enabling people to control computers with their minds. And for the first time Musk has given the implant device a name. Here's all you need to know about Neuralink and the company's first human trial. According to Reuters, Japanese government bond yields tracked U.S. yields lower on Tuesday after the Treasury Department said it would need to borrow less than previously estimated. Two-year JGB yields received some upward pressure after an auction of the securities was met with lackluster demand, but the effect was short-lived. 